A day of infamy is etched in our collective memory, the day when hatred took its most destructive form. Nearly two years ago, in May of 2022, a regular shopping day in Buffalo, New York, morphed into a nightmare. Peyton Gendron, driven by repugnant racism, targeted a supermarket popular among the city's black community. This was a calculated act of violence, not random. A man steeped in white supremacist ideologies, Gendron chose this location to inflict maximum damage on a community he irrationally despised. His hatred was so intense that he live-streamed his rampage, turning the act of taking innocent lives into a horrific spectacle of his distorted beliefs. Armed with a semi-automatic rifle, each pull of the trigger amplified his bigotry. This was a national outrage, a global heartbreak, a grim reminder of the destructive power of hate. As the news spread across the world, people watched in horror, burdened with the knowledge of such unspeakable hatred. This was an attack on our shared humanity, on our collective conscience. A brutal reminder that extreme hatred can shatter lives, devastate communities, and stain the fabric of our society. In the aftermath of this monstrous act, a community was left to pick up the pieces. Ten lives were lost, leaving behind a void that can never be filled. The emotional scars left on the survivors and the larger community are a constant reminder of the hatred that spurred this act. The decision by federal prosecutors to seek the death penalty for Peyton Gendron has divided opinion. The debate serves as a stark reminder of the complexities of justice. But amidst the darkness, there were glimmers of resilience. The survivors, in their strength and courage, have become an inspiration. They have refused to be defined by this act of violence, demonstrating a remarkable resilience. Their strength is a testament to the human spirit. The wider community too has shown incredible unity in the face of adversity. Their collective strength and unity serve as a powerful counter-narrative to the hate that fueled this act. They remind us that even in the darkest of times there is light, that even in the face of hatred, love and unity can prevail. As we grapple with the aftermath, we also grapple with the question of justice. The legal consequences faced by Peyton Gendron have been severe and unprecedented. He's currently serving multiple life sentences, a fate sealed by his own admission of guilt to state charges of murder and domestic terrorism motivated by hate. However, a recent decision by federal prosecutors has added a new dimension to this case. For the first time under President Joe Biden's administration, the U.S. Department of Justice has authorized a new pursuit of the death penalty. Gendron's attorney, however, has expressed disappointment at this decision, believing that efforts should be focused elsewhere. They argue that we should be combating the factors that facilitated the crime, such as the rampant racism and hate that fueled Gendron's actions, rather than seeking the harshest possible punishment. Survivors and families of the victims are torn. While the wheels of justice turn, the larger question remains. Can there ever be true justice for such a heinous act? As we remember those we've lost, we also look to the future, a future where hatred and extremism have no place, a future where every supermarket aisle, every school hallway, every public space is a safe haven, not a potential crime scene. But how do we get there? We start by acknowledging the factors that facilitated this crime. We need to actively combat these destructive ideologies. We can't just turn a blind eye and hope it goes away. We need to engage in open dialogue, even when it's uncomfortable. We should also remember that we're not alone in this fight. There are countless organizations, both local and national, that are tirelessly working to combat hate and spread love. They need our support. And as we work towards this more inclusive society, let's not forget the survivors and the families of the victims. Let's ensure they're heard and their loved ones are never forgotten. Let's stand together, united against hate, and work towards a future where everyone, regardless of their race or ethnicity, can feel safe and valued. Share your thoughts on whether he deserves the death penalty. Feel free to comment, give a thumbs up, and subscribe for additional stories.